So in our everyday lives, we're exposed to many different types of visual settings. And some of these settings are a lot more successful. We actually want to spend time in them compared to other settings where actually we are not so successful. And it's evident that um, there are aspects of urban design that actually might have a, a, a strong influence on many aspects of our lives. And the discussion to date on urban design has largely been theoretical, supported by really small scale studies. We have two examples here where the, um, the author of the studies conducted research on asking people which architectural style do they like or where places do they like. And the problem with these studies is there's only 600 samples of these studies. So we cannot actually make inferences in these models to give predictions on the, on the urban environment. So of course, there's been an explosion in data, but there's also been an explosion in neural network research, um, particularly in computer vision. And that's, you know, we've probably heard lots of uh, things about autonomous vehicles and uh, things to computer vision and neural networks in general. We will probably soon have a majority of urban transport taking care of, taking care of autonomous vehicles. But maybe something you, ha you don't know yet is that um, neural networks are helping us actually extract information about our environment. And that is through uh, being able to extract information from images of the urban environment using neural networks. So our research aim really is to understand um, what aspects of urban design, such as, for example, urban perception, uh, such as uh, urban aesthetics, as well as uh, certain urban characteristics, such as, let's say, building frontage quality, um, can influence um, different things, such as um, economic well, uh, prosperity and also residential well-being. But so first, I want to talk to you about urban perception or urban aesthetics. So, you know, when we're having a really tough day or just like we're just really busy in our lives, we often kind of have this like vision that we really want to go to somewhere beautiful to kind of find this sense of relaxation. But often when we think of a beautiful space, we all, often what comes to mind is this, this natural place, this really beautiful countryside scenery like this. But we can't always just easily escape to such a scene. Um, I mean, most of us live in the city. It takes a long time to kind of get out of the city and get this kind of, you know, this beautiful scenery. But so I want to understand, you know, can we actually, you know, find such a beautiful scenery as well in the city? And the reason I'm interested in this is that I also, in my PhD, do research connecting beautiful uh, places and our well-being. And I found that people that live in more beautiful places actually do report better health. And when you visit a more scenic place, you do get a sense of increased happiness. And this holds in urban environments as well. But what makes um, a city beautiful? So for a lot of my research, I use this website called Scenic or Not. And it's a simple game that people play, and they rate these images between 1 and 10. And what's happening in the background is that each image represents a square kilometer of Great Britain. So I've got like 217,000 images rated 1.5 million times. So this is fantastic data, but I only have one image representing a square kilometer, which isn't great for understanding the beauty of a city, because within one kilometer, there is a lot of variation in, in scenic, scenic beauty. So I was wondering, you know, there's this explosion in neural networks. Can I, you know, use neural networks to basically uh, create a program that can actually predict the beauty of images? So um, my first problem was that, well, if you want to train a neural network from scratch, you need millions and millions of examples. And I only have a few hundred thousand images from Scenic or not. So I had to figure out, well, what can I do? Well, so there's a thing you can do with neural network that's called transfer learning. And what you can do is you can take a neural network that's really good at a, a certain task and retrain it to do something really similar. So I basically use the neural network from MIT. It's called Places. And it does a really good job of detecting the category of a scene. So you can see there's two images here. One, it can say there's about 60% chance of a skyscraper in there. And another image where it's like about 35% uh, certain there's an ocean in there. So it's very good at already understanding scenes. So I thought, oh, that's you know, pretty close to maybe then taking the next step to understanding beauty. So I used transfer learning, and I retrained this neural network with my you know, hundred thousands of images I have from Scenic or not. And it does actually a really good job. So the accuracy is 0.66, which is good for this kind of task, because it's trying to, get, to guess what the human consensus might be for beauty. So there's no like, absolute you know, uh, correct answer. So it's uh, pretty good. And so anyway, for fun, I thought, hey, let's give it like 
uh, images of London, and let's see what happens. So there's, these, there's a website called Geograph that collects these images um, of all around the uh, Great Britain, and it has about 200,000 images of London. So I fed all these images through my neural network and just to see what happens. So one of my favorite areas in London that I love spending time in is Hampstead Heath, because if I'm really stressed out, then I love sitting on that hill. I just feel this you know, great sense of well-being. So how does it predict in terms of beauty? Well, so purple is super scenic, green is scenic, gray is not scenic, and you'll see all around Hampstead Heath, my neural network has predicted that there is a lot of scenic spots. And for example, here's an image. And if we close in on central London, you'll notice that the parks are coming out, but there's also a kind of a line, a path, and I was like, what is that path? You know, what is this path of green, green, you know, dots? And it turns out it's Regent's Canal. So it not only can get, guess that there's like parks that are obviously really beautiful, but it's also uh, found that uh, there's a canal path that's also beautiful. And also, it, it doesn't only just pick up on natural places, you know, around just Tower Hill, not so far from here, there's the beautiful Tower Bridge and all those historical buildings. It's also picked up on that as being beautiful as well. So I'm just, yeah, just really excited about the fact that we've taken a, a, the first step in understanding, you know, where in the city we might actually find beauty. Okay, from this, we'll now talk about the use of deep neural networks applying on detecting characteristics of the urban environments. Specifically, we'll focus on building frontages. So what are building frontages? They're basically the size of a building. We call it active when there's doors and windows facing it, and we call it blank when there's just a wall facing it. Imagine yourself walking along a blank frontage corridor. What do you feel? You probably feel unsafe and uninterested. And this is why this is an important problem in urban design. So we cast this as a machine vision problem to try to leverage on the data available in, in, in urban imagery. We try to classify the street image into four classes. They are blank frontages on the left, on both sides. There's single side active frontages, both sides active frontages, and non-urban frontages. So we constructed a similar convolutional neural net model that uh, Shanu, Kie, Merve, and various talked of uh, to classify the street image. So we leverage on two data sets. The first data set is a data set from Google Street View. It's basically the street image for every street basically of the entire world, a front-facing one. And we also leverage on 3D modeling data, which would allow us to automatically label the images instead of manually labeling it. So from this data set, we split the data set into a training set and a testing set. And we tried to classify um, thousands of images in London. And we, got, and, and we achieved a 93% from this model on unseen images. So we trained it on the training sets, and we tested on an unseen set, and we ach achieved around a 93%. Predicting this model on the rest of London, you see areas in central London that are more active in red and places in Canary Wharf, which are less active in blue. And you can, it gives you an intuition on which places are more interesting, more active, and perhaps more scenic. Um, continuing from this, we extended the CNN model to a, a one that not only classified the street images, but to actually localize where in the image does this activation happen in the neural network. And we built a building frontage detector, which tells you where in the image do these different urban elements um, um, occur? So the question we had in the beginning was, how do these characteristics relate to socioeconomic outcomes? So to do that, we related with various socioeconomic indicators with these urban elements. The first model we constructed was a house price model. We related building frontage quality with also house price. And what we found, there was a relationship between the two, and we found a neighborhood effect. What we mean by neighborhood effects is that if you live within proximity, say 10 minutes walking distance of um, high proportions of active frontages, you're more likely to pay a higher price than the exact same property in another neighborhood with the exact attributes without these active frontages. What, this, what does this tell you? It tells you that people do prefer and are willing to pay more to places where you have more active frontages around you. This could be related to beauty, could be related to safety, and so forth. Continuing on, 
and then going backwards to the research of Shinuki, we try to relate the two. What are, so there are places that are more beautiful. So how do these relate to some design of the built environments? And we found there's a clear connection between the characteristics of an urban environment, such as building frontage quality and the beauty of a place. And that makes sense. Places with walls are likely to be more boring. Uh, places with um, more trees are likely to be more scenic and so forth. To summarize, and as a, this is a first step for us to connect, um, to, to apply deep neural networks into not only understanding the perception of places, but to also to uh, understand, better understand urban design. And we think this is very important as we believe um, by quantifying aspects of urban design on a massive scale would help us to contribute to building more socially cohesive and economically prosperous cities. Thank you very much. Thank you.